Mrs. Oberlechner, yes, Renate, a good soul, and I cannot stress this enough, an excellent household help. She has been with me for a long time, 12, 13, more than 10 years in any case. Poor Renate hasn't always had it easy either. You know, unfortunately, God took Renate's husband away some time ago. She was left all alone with her boy. In the meantime, of course, Maxil is no longer a boy either. And that's how Mrs. Oberlechner came to me. After all, in the community you have to be there for each other. Renate needed a job and I needed help. And such a household is really no job for us, isn't it, dear Valentin? And that the boy, Maxel, soon went to the city, already experienced a lot, Mrs. Oberlechner and me. Over the years, you also get to know each other better personally when you spend so much time together. On a personal level, you certainly know what I mean. The boy... to insinuate here. Renate, I mean Mrs. Oberlechner and me, for heaven's sake. What? The Lord has no understanding for such things. I am a man of God. That is where my loyalty lies. I made a covenant many years ago with God and my church, and I honor that covenant every day. I can imagine how you come up with such nonsense. The people here in the village are always talking shit about someone. I, and yet, or precisely because of this, I am grateful every day for being able to hold my guiding hand over the community. I see you're from the city. Rup, Charlotte Rup is my name. What exactly do you do here? The incidents, yes, but I would also like to understand them very much. Ah, then you must have met my husband, Gustl, August Rup. The fact that we're meeting here suits me very well, to be honest. Please take me to him for a moment. Yes, yes he was. We went to my sister's house with the children. She always complains that we come so rarely. Maybe you know what it's like. Anyway, August left early because of the thing with Lent. Then they sent for him. They already know that he'll come home as soon as they call him. Maybe it has something to do with my sister. Anyway, he takes his job here in town very seriously, you know. It's terrible what happened to Lent. Excuse me, if I had known that you had just arrived, I would of course not have asked you to take me to my Gustl straight away. How rude of me. Why don't you first arrive here and have a look around? 
then you will get to know the village and the people here. We can also walk together for a while, then I'll introduce you right away. I wanted to go to the marketplace anyway. And when we meet my husband on the way, you will also meet your supervisor and I will find my husband. Two birds with one stone, that would be something. What? What do you mean he's not here? Um, well, as I said, I didn't go with him, but it won't take that long. He should have been back by now. Not that anything happened to him on the way. That makes me feel quite different, Mr. Schmidt, right? Excuse me, I urgently need to speak to Xaver and Severin too. No, I don't have a good feeling about this. We'll have to look at the place another time. Excuse me. Children! Children, where are you? Children, we have to go into town quickly. Mr. Schmidt, I'm afraid I don't have any more time. See you later. Friedel, Friedel Güttinger, good day, but just call me Friedel. How can I help today? Do you have the premium shoe care set? The Lord shall thank you. Now give me that. You are one low down son of a bitch! But good! You leave me no choice! Here! For you! Now give it to me! So, let's see! Tell me, have you ever dreamt of killing a man? The other day, when I reached this place, 
a disgusting guy intercepted me at the cow pasture at the entrance to this village. He looked like a mixture of a typical Bavarian and a battlefield. Face like an ox, thin and bald. Strange guy. He's the one who got me into this situation. Will you let me finish? He said that he was supposed to kidnap a cow on an assignment. However, I guess it didn't work out. At least, he got a very nasty wound on his face. Looked like a hoof. Well, you know how it is. The smart one wins. In any case, he was so frustrated that he stole my snack. Then he took off, heading west. Must have been a robber. What a good for nothing Bavarian. Shut your mouth! I was so hungry that I had to eat the in cuisine. It was already afternoon, so I treated myself a good couple of Weisswurst sausages. Well, and then what happened is what we are expecting together now. I have never hated a person so much. My bowels feel like they have been at war for 20 years. All I want for this dog is to learn a lesson. And besides, I want my snack back! Another meal like that, and there will be nothing written on my tombstone because I will bury myself in this tiny hole! It feels like half of my body is already part of Volpert Sofen! Please, fetch my snack from the robber's lair! It must be there somewhere! And if you meet one of these disgusting creatures there, don't be afraid! to turn their faces inside out in the name of Johann Ulrich Logemann. Here you have everything you need to fight my snack. And don't be afraid of violence. Risk everything for the ham. And now off we go. You charge quite a lot for such a small favor. All right, but then answer me one question. What is the worst and most Humiliating Bavarian insult, you know. Ha 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 ha! That's a good one! Ha 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 ha! That's good! Okay, take this one! And here's something else a personal gift. Such a handsome young man. Yes, that's right. A visitor. What an unexpected pleasure. Would you look at that? Census reporter. How interesting. My goodness, please call me Renate, Mr. Valentin. Otherwise, I feel so old. How can I help? Yes, please, Mr. Valentin. Of course, Mr. Valentin.
So, you have some information. I think it's good that you're interested in the place and the people, but you've been taken in by a rumor. This is unacceptable. After all, you don't know him. But people just like to gossip. You know, normally not so much happens here. Then you just make something up. But there's really nothing to the story. Some people are just a bit narrow-minded. They just can't imagine that Mr. Bayerle and I have a friendly and respectful relationship. Nothing else. I'm not bothered by that. What's the point? Sometimes the priest gets a bit angry, but I have enough to do. Actually, I should be getting back to work, Mr. Valentin. Yes, please, Mr. Valentin. Damn, you scared me. Why are you sneaking up on us like that? Wait, Paus. He's not one of us. What are you doing here? How did you get here? Who are you? Damn it, Sully. Put yourself together. And you fool. Don't you know you've landed in the camp of the dreaded Pascolini? Run while you still can.
Diplomatic sounds good. And then you should see that you gain ground very quickly before Pasqualini catches you here. He makes short work of you. So, what do you want from us? We are the Munich Moonshiners. No, not Moo Moo. Moo Moo, with two O's at the back. Not Moo Moo. How does that sound? That has no effect at all. It's called Moo Moo. Do you notice how that immediately sticks? We have no less goal than to distill the first and best beer spirit in the world. Schnapps made from beer. Can there be a better idea? You know what I mean. A beer brandy. Practically two wonderful drinks in their essence combined in one tasty drop. It's all right, Sully. I think he gets it. Do you know what a distillery license costs in the Kingdom of Bavaria? The ticket back home already costs us our last pennies. But in the States, we learned everything. Moonshiners, those are the people who distill the noblest drops with the simplest means in the deepest forest. Just like us. That we could join forces with this troop of vagabonds and deserters came at the right time. They let us distill here and we provide them with better liquor than they deserve. No wonder, with this liquor she serves, people deserve better than this will. And we couldn't go anywhere else anyway. We'll never find a location and protection like this again. Why not? Check it out with her. I can't imagine the old lady getting involved in such a deal. But if she did, we'd be in. Shh, don't talk so loud. No, we can't do anything about that either. They only accept us because we supply enough booth. But they also just want to be left alone. They are all here because they have had enough trouble in their lives. Some of them are really bad guys. Some of them were in the war and never really found their way back. Almost all of them have been in prison. There is no place for them elsewhere. Just stay out of this part of the forest. Then everyone will have their peace. And peace is the most important thing to distill a good schnapps.
Servus, what do you want?
It's all right. Go on then, but don't touch anything. What kind of questions are these, and why should I answer any of your questions? Fine by me. But you promise me you'll find the bastard who did this. Yeah, but hurry up. I don't have all day. On the evening it happened at Katis pub, he meets his revolutionary friends there every Sunday. They always discuss God and the world. Their ideas are too crazy for me. Where would that get us? But when you're young, you can be a bit crazy. Leubel, our teacher, he was out in the big white world to study in Munich. Since then, he's had all these wild ideas in his head. And his pal Severin, he's always hanging around the school. The good Dr. Schweighöfer thinks he's particularly clever, huh? He was there too. And Hans Kirgel, who used to be a farmhand. Unfortunately, there were issues. Lenz and Hans Kirgel often disagreed. But when it comes to politics, they seem to stick together. I think Lenz mostly sat with them. But I'm not that interested. About the farm? Uh, what do you want to know? Many come, many go. Just like everywhere else. Of course I like to keep the good ones. Finding decent stuff is really not easy. We also had a death at the farm. What happened with Tensi is really tragic. She took her own life. We found her, Lenz and me. She was hanging back there in the shed from a beam on a rope. What a terrible thing to happen. it coming. Sometimes I ask myself whether it could have ended differently. I don't know what happened to her then. Schweighöfer picked her up. Say, Doctor, ask him if you want to know anything else. And here, Findeis, Hans Kirgel, a laborer. He also stopped coming recently. was quite fond of Zensi and he couldn't cope with her death. He was always a bit different, I would say. What's going on with Hans Kirgel, I don't know. I'm not that close with my employees. And whoever doesn't want to come, I won't run after them. He said, oh, are you going to walk around here all day asking stupid questions and stopping people from working? Those filthy rags! If I catch them, I'll hang him from the highest tree! Some hunters are afraid of their own shadows, and mothers no longer want to let their children play in the fields. Even I started to look around when I walked through my forest. That's the crime! A few weeks ago, we heard about them for the first time, about the Pasculinis. In Katis pub, a journeyman told us that he barely escaped them. He was very pale when he told me. Uh, I immediately bought him another schnapps, so he would stop shaking, the poor boy. But I didn't think too much of it. It could have been anywhere, and I don't know how sensitive the guy was. But then, all of a sudden, Rizzi was standing on my farm, crying. And that's when I knew they were here.